Hi job seekers, welcome back to Indu Season. I'm Heather. Today we're going to talk about one of the very first steps in landing your dream job, and that's writing your resume. Your resume is your first impression to your potential employer, so it's crucial that we get it right. But don't stress. Today I'm going to walk you through some simple strategies to ensure that you are showcasing your skills and experiences in a professional and impactful way. So let's get started. When starting your resume, you really want to choose the right format. My suggestion is to go online and just search for resumes in your career field and start looking at what's available uh, online to see what other people are doing. And you can kind of see the layout that works best for you, number of pages. Typically, if you are a traditionalist when it comes to resumes, you would say one page is plenty of space, uh, but there are several uh, career lines that uh, it's acceptable to go over into two pages. But if you do go into two pages, I always recommend to make sure you, you are using the full two pages. Um, you should not overflow slightly onto your second page and have a lot of unnecessary white space. Uh, also, while you are looking up what other people in your field are doing, make sure you're watching what type of certifications uh, or credentials are they listing on their resume because you want to make sure that you are including the same things if you have them. So make sure that you are uh, including those on your resume or if there are any specific types of links uh, that people include, such as an e-portfolio, um, some careers, a GitHub for all of your coding work uh, is really important. So just make sure you're watching what other people are doing and that you are doing the same thing. Uh, next to think about is the header at the top of your resume. You want to make sure that your name is very large, uh, that your paper resume or digital version of your resume is really all that they have to know you by. So you want to make sure that your name is very prominent and sticks out to your uh, potential interviewer. So uh, make sure that that is large, bolded, a different color, whatever you want to do to really make it stand out. Uh, you should also be including your address, phone number, email, potentially a website or GitHub like I mentioned earlier. Uh, see what all extra things that other people are including in their headers in your field. Let's talk objectives or summaries. If you want them, need them, again, I would look at what people in your field are doing. When I first came into the workforce, uh, I remember being taught that it was outdated, old fashioned, and you should not include an objective. But now I'm noticing that a lot of resumes online, people are starting to include them again. So if you feel like it's necessary for your resume, there's a few things to note. Uh, first, it should be at the top and or a prominent location on your resume. So you want to make sure that it is seen first uh, as opposed to buried at the bottom. Um, and it should also be tailored to your specific job. This is a chance for you to mention any specifics that are listed in the job application. Uh, and you wanna make sure that you are highlighting some of the things that really uh, make you a quality candidate for that position. Now it's time to talk about the meat of your resume. That would be your education and your work experience. What really qualifies you for the job? Um, so you really need to decide which one of those things are you going to prioritize first. Uh, either that work experience, do you have a lot of it that's really relevant to the position that you're wanting? Um, or if not, but you have the education for it, you might want to list your education first. It really depends on how long you've been working. Um, if you've been in the workforce for 15 years or more, uh, you may not find that the education is as important as how much work experience that you've had. So you may put experience first and then your education below. If you're a new graduate, uh, 
You can emphasize that your degree is fresh and you've learned lots of new things in the field uh, and it's very fresh in your mind, so it is really good to have it up towards the top. So um, something to consider what is most important for you. Um, either way you decide to go, which one you want to prioritize first, you should, in both cases, uh, put the most recent ahead of the older items. So if you have a master's degree, that would be the most recent, uh, and then a bachelor's degree, and if you have an associate's. Um, same thing with jobs, your current or most recent job goes first, and then it just works its way down. Um, a lot of employers don't need to see more than 10 years worth of uh, work experience, uh, so you don't have to feel obligated to put a long, long list if uh, it goes past 10 years. If it's all relevant and you've worked at the same place for 10 years um, and then maybe 10 years at another place, it could still be relevant to list it um, and it takes up less space if you've been at the same place for a long period of time. So let's go through a couple what if situations. So what if you have some gaps in your employment? Um, maybe your mom took some time off work to be with her babies for a couple years um, or maybe during COVID, you lost your job and uh, you're finally getting back in the workforce, maybe you, or maybe you uh, went back to get a degree and did not work during that. There are lots of reasonable explanations why you might uh, have a job gap. So uh, you can do a couple different things. First, you can still go ahead and list the years and uh, just be open to answering that question during the interview. Uh, another option would be to uh, leave out the specific dates of your employment and rather list the number of years. So um, if you worked at a fast food restaurant as a manager uh, for seven years, you would write seven years rather than putting uh, 2002 through 2009. Um, so that could be an option for you. Uh, another scenario to consider is if you have not graduated yet. A uh, simple fix if you are going to be graduating with your degree very soon, uh, just list anticipated graduation date and then the month and year that you will graduate. Uh, many uh, employers are willing to hire someone who has not graduated yet but will be very soon. Uh, and then what do you do if you are in the process of changing careers? Um, in my professional opinion, I would suggest listing all the experience that is relevant to that specific change. So if you uh, went back to school to switch careers, that definitely needs to be at the top of your resume. Uh, if you have interned or um, done some things on the side that would help you transition into this new career, that should be listed um, somewhere towards the top of your resume to help you make the switch. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of writing your resume, and it's adding your own personality to the resume. You can do this a couple different ways. Um, one common way that I'd like to do it is adding a little bit of color to your resume. Again, when you research the resumes in your career field, you want to make sure that that is something that other people are doing as well. If you are in a career field that is strictly black and white resumes, you want to stick to that too. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are following suit of what is expected. Um, but if it's something that is allowable in your field, a little bit of color um, can spice up your resume in a fun way. Um, my recommendations is to stick to neutral colors, navies, beiges, tans. Um, those are a lot of times very simple and not going to do go over the top. Um, reds are usually looked as a power color. Um, so if you want to be bold, you could go that route as well. But there's lots of kinds of different colors um, if you want to look into color uh, theory and um, the meanings of different colors, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so if you want to portray something in particular, you could get a little bit more specific. When you're personalizing your resume, you also want to keep in mind ATS or Applicant Tracking System format. Um, many, many, many recruiters use ATS to make their job easier. And what it simply is, if you're not aware, it puts the uh, resume through a system and it just does a check looking for specific keywords that are going to help them decide if you are a good candidate for the job. Um, so you want to make sure that you are thinking about those things as you're creating your format, your layout of the resume. Um, so here are a few things. Make sure you cater your keywords to the job application, uh, which every single job app that you apply to, you should really be catering your resume to. 
Um, so make sure that you are including the things that they are looking for. Um, if they're looking for team management, if they are looking for um, someone who is comfortable with public speaking, if they are looking for someone who uh, can collaborate with teams electronically, you need to be making sure to include those words somewhere on your resume and really your cover letter too. Uh, next is a suggestion to use F and E layouts. Um, they find that just like we read left to right and top to bottom here in the United States, um, that the ATS system also does that as well. You should also be using simple fonts um, and just a couple other things to make sure to avoid to make it easier for the system to read your work. Uh, you don't want to be using tables or logos, images, or other types of graphics. Um, and then your headers and footers, uh, you want to avoid those as well because they will not be read during a quick scan. So earlier when I was talking about your header for your um, name and such, don't necessarily put that in the header of the document. Um, you may want to consider uh, making sure that it is actually part of your body of the document. Um, Another option you could consider too is uh, having an ATS compatible resume and then a second resume that looks nicer, that has all that extra formatting that works um, for the human eye as opposed to just a computer eye. 